Education, giving motivation, and inspiring imagination. Sowing seeds of courage, self worth, and significance. The Impact Network for the spirit, soul, and body. Impact is yours. Hey, welcome back to the Jewel Tech Show right here on the Impact Network. And today, now it's time for Millionaire Madness. Today's millionaire tip. Every successful millionaire understands the value of a team. Listen, you're not going anywhere if you can't get along with people. <laughs> Listen, you have got to understand that you need people in your life. Listen, I don't know any great successful entrepreneurs. I don't care if they're in politics, business, media, education. Everybody needs a team. I don't care how uh, smart you are, how creative you are. You cannot do it by yourself. Otherwise, you're going to end up staying mom and pop. But if you're interested in really growing your dynasty and expanding and growing, you got to learn to get along with other people. You know, recently I was reading an article in, uh, I think it's Fast Money Magazine, really good. And they were talking about Steve Jobs and the person that, you know, we knew Steve Jobs for Apple. But they were talking about how he had to grow into a leadership role because he didn't always do the best with collaborating and getting along with other people. From what the article said, I didn't meet him myself. But they just talked about how, you know, he uh, was a yeller. So if you work with Steve Jobs, you had to learn how to listen past the yelling. But here's my point in saying all of that, is that understand that each person has a gift and a talent. If you spend all your time focusing on what you don't like, what their weaknesses are, what they say wrong, what they do wrong, you're never going to get the asset or the goal out of them. So start focusing on, change your lenses, and start focusing on the things that add value to you. And of course, you're going to have to determine that because it doesn't mean everybody's supposed to be on your team either, okay, because I sure don't believe that, but I do believe you've got some good, strong people, so make sure you pay attention to those things for developing a good team. All right, now it's time for Financial Watch. Listen to this. In today's news, China has just overtaken the United States as the world's largest economy. I don't know how I feel about that, but listen, the United States lost its role as the underwriter of the global economic system. True, there have been many other times of frustration for the United States before, and times when American behavior was hardly materialistic, like in 1971, when President Nixon decided not to have our paper currency backed by gold or silver. We've just gone past that crossover on the chart, according to the IMF. By the end of 2014, China made up 16.48 percent of the world's purchasing power adjusted GDP and the U.S. will, will make up 16.28 percent adjusted for purchasing power. China's economy is now the world's largest, all right? But in terms of the raw market value of China's currency, it still has a long way to go. And that's the latest news on this Financial Watch. We'll be right back after this break.
Congratulations to the Impact Network and its founders, Apostle Wayne T. and Dr. Beverly Y. Jackson, for now becoming the only African-American founded and operated international Christian TV network, bringing the gospel to Africa, including over 40 countries and 900 million viewers. We salute you. Today, she is an author, entrepreneur, coach, speaker, life strategist, and she got the nerve to be running for mayor. Yes, I said mayor, honey. Mayor of Southfield, Michigan. Let's give it up for Sylvia Jordan. <laughs> hey, girl, let me tell you something. I'm so proud of you. You like doing a whole bunch of stuff. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you for the show and just for all that you're doing. Absolutely, okay, yeah. I wanna jump right in here because I know you've got this whole piece on belief or believepreneur. Okay, so break that down, what is that? So a believepreneur is a person that believes okay. the dreams that are in their heart can come to pass. So it's having a form of believing that all the things that God has put in you Mm. You can do it. All right now. All the dreams that he put okay. in you. So now, you okay, so that sounds so good, but let's just keep it real. Okay. We know we got distractions, we have challenges, we have problems, we have all kinds of things that can try to come up against believing. I mean, come on, we've all, you know, thought as a little girl our life would be a certain way. I think mine turned out that way, but I had to overcome a lot of challenges. Yeah. Probably the same thing with you. What do you do in between, okay, I'm believing for this, I believe God put this in my heart, but okay, this happened, that happened, this happened, and this didn't come to pass like I thought. What do you do with all that stuff? And you keep on going. Okay. You don't let anything stop you because there's so many odds stacked against everybody. Everybody has a story. Mm -hmm. Everybody can tell you the failures, the defeats, mm -hmm. the uh, things that they haven't been successful in, but that should not stop you. Mm. And unfortunately, life has knocked everybody down, yeah. but you got to get back up. Wow. And so I believe in, I'm a believer that you can get back up, start all over and keep it moving. Yeah. So even if you've been abused, yep. even if you've been hurt, yep. even if you've been molested, raped, yep. any of those horrible things that like you said, everybody has a story. Yep. Put the I, violin down and put keep Put the violin going. down yep. and keep moving. Right. All right. So let me ask you this, because you definitely have an extremely strong mindset. And I love that about you when it comes to believing uh, for the impossible against all odds. Because emotionally, let's face it, sometimes when you're going through those challenges, I mean, we're sitting on this couch looking all pretty, talking about, you just keep going, you keep going. But at that moment, I mean, aren't there those real life times where you feel like, I don't know if I can go on? Yeah. Or you or you have a day where you cry. I mean, what do we say to those people? Because, you know, I can hear people saying, okay, that's cool, but right now I'm in the middle of the worst time in my life. Them having that emotion attached, isn't that an authentic mo emotion, but they still need to move past that? Yes, it is. It's real. You know, the challenges are real. And I want to just share a little bit about my story. When I graduated from high school, they didn't want to give me that diploma. You know, in other words, they say, you haven't earned it. Mm. And so when I graduated, I, I struggled through high school. Mm -hmm. But yet I knew I could do the work. Right. So when it was time to go to college, you know, all those around me said, you better find a trade school. You better go somewhere and sit down. Mm. But I believed in my heart right. that I could do college. Right. And I had somebody in my corner. I had a mentor. Wow. And that's important, you know, as okay. you move forward in life. Right. It's having somebody that can stand there with you right. and encourage you. Right. And so my youth pastor said, if you want to go to college, we will find a college for you. Mm. So he found me a small Christian college in Huntington, Indiana. Wow. They were looking for some black kids. <laughs> they accepted me on probation. Wow. I made the dean's list both semesters wow. and then transferred to the best school in the United States, Michigan State University. <laughs> graduated <laughs> <Yeah>. there. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, yes, the odds were against me, but you have to keep, yeah, you have to keep, you keep it keep moving. Keep so was going. it that time where you kind of adapted that mentality in college? Well, no, it actually started very, very young. 
young. I have four brothers and four sisters. Okay. And my dad, we were raised in Jeffrey's Projects here in Detroit up until I was in the third grade. But he would tell us, we're not going to be here for long. Oh, wow. You know, we're going to move out of the projects. Wow. I got more in store for my children than living there. Wow. And he did exactly that. Really? He moved us over to the west side of town wow. and kept telling us, dream, dream big. Yeah. Close your eyes and yeah. just know that it can happen. So he was really a prime example in, right. in my life That's growing awesome. up. That's yeah. awesome. So your yeah. dad really kind of so helped you with dad. that dad. Yes, yes. All right, great. So let me ask you this because you got, you have so many irons in the fire. Yes, I mean, I you're a pastor's <laughs> wife. We didn't even mention that. You know, you've got books. Do you foresee yourself doing all that you're doing or did you just take advantage of opportunities as they came? You know what? It's, it's really a combination of both. Okay. I knew that I would always be in politics. Um, at a very young age, I had to write a report on getting involved with a famous black American. Mm -hmm. And I chose Richard Austin. And those of you from this area, he was the first black man that was running for mayor ah. in the city of Detroit. Wow. And I wanted to meet him. And so I wrote the uh, local newspaper and I said, I need to meet him. And they wow. arranged for me to spend an entire day campaigning. And from there, the bug was set. Really? Politics, here I come. And wow. then things have just evolved. You know, yeah. you have to move. Movement brings momentum. Right. So when you begin to move, doors begin to open. Opportunities begin to come to you. Right. So a lot of things have happened through movement, mm -hmm. and a lot of things have happened through what I've planned to do. Right. And so uh, it's a combination of right. both. So do you think it's been easy? No, the road is not. <laughs> it is not been you easy. You make it look so easy. Oh, she's no. sitting there so pretty. I'm like, oh no, you make it look so easy. All right, listen, we'll be right back with more stuff you Jordan after this break. Impact is different. Impact. Impact is healing. Healing for the spirit, for the soul, and the body. Healing for the generations. Healing for our cities and healing for the nations. Healing yesterday's wounds, bringing today's hope and tomorrow's prosperity. The Impact Network for the spirit, soul, and body. Impact is yours. sitting here with life strategist, coach, entrepreneur, and this chick so bad, she is running for mayor of a major city, the city of Southfield, Michigan, which I spent a lot of time actually growing up in, yes. <laughs> so I'm so proud of you for doing that. I just want you to know I really love your drive, love your thought process, and it is amazing to me, you being a beautiful, strong sister, you know what I mean, this running for mayor. Was it always a dream of yours as a child to run for mayor of a major city like that? Absolutely not. It was, oh, was it? it just evolved, you know, serving on the position of city council. Wow. And so, um, and to tell you a little story about city council, it was a dream that I always had to be mm -hmm. in politics. The first three times that I ran, I lost. And mm -hmm. so, you know, when you face failure, you think, okay, that dream will never happen. Mm -hmm. And then the fourth time, again, talk about a coach. My husband said, it's always been a dream of yours. Run. Mm -hmm. And I was running again against a a Jewish individual. Wow. And so the odds were stacked against me back then. Wow. But I ran with all of my heart and I won. And I've been elected. Yes. <laughs> I've yes. been elected consistently since 1997. Wow. Girl, that's off the chain. So you felt the first three times. Absolutely. I was a three time loser. And I'm sure you were almost wondering if you should yeah, run again. Yeah. You know, in fact, I was encouraging other people in my church to run. And I clearly heard God say to me, I didn't tell you to tell them to run. I told you to run. I said, well, Lord, I've failed so many times. Right. And right. you get back up and you start Yeah, again. that is and so good. So talk yeah. a little bit about the campaigning process. What does that look like? You know, kissing babies, hugging folks, and just, yeah. you know, it's part of my nature. I love yeah. people. Yeah. And so it's easy for me okay. you know, to just talk, 
strike up conversations and yeah. really get people engaged because in a city you want that city to thrive right so we're a suburb of Detroit mm -hmm. and so as Detroit is really on a comeback we want South to remain Southfield to remain an international absolutely business hub in the communities to stand absolutely strong. that is so good so let me ask you because I know you know outside of becoming mayor of Southfield what can we expect to see you as a relief preneur okay a couple things you know I've written some books I've developed a mosquito product you can go to my website okay. to uh, purchase that. Love that it's an all natural mosquito product that will stop the mosquitoes nice. and you know just being on this set Jewel you've inspired me to rekindle the dream <laughs> of having a television show yes. so I will be right behind you <laughs> I love I'm it. telling you we have so many dreams God yeah. has given all of us so much yeah and it's up to us to carry out right the things that he's given us Absolutely. So, you know many, many people say I'm waiting on God but you know what yeah he's waiting Waiting on you absolutely to produce it yeah things that now let me ask life. you this because I know being in politics and you know you're also a pastor your husband senior pastor that can be you know that's always been I think a conflicting thing because people are like she don't have no business she in the church what she doing running for politics what would you say to a person who is kind of like I don't know if she should be in politics because she's in leadership in a church well you know what that's what has been the problem believers have taken the sideline too long right. we need to get involved in every area yeah. not only politics but education business right. entertainment arts we should be dominating right. those fields so yeah. I encourage people whatever your gifts are whatever your dreams are get in that field yeah. and dominate yeah. you know look at yourself you're in the television industry yeah. and you are now dominating yes. and so that's the way it's supposed to be yeah. you're not supposed to be sitting yeah. on the sidelines yeah. in life yeah we, we, we should be a big deal in every hello. area hello it sh we shouldn't be like some little mouse on the side talking about I'm not gonna say nothing that's not for me so I'm really proud of you for that do you feel like and obviously your husband supported you the whole balance of being mommy and wife and you know soon to be mayor and entrepreneur has that ever gotten challenging or do you feel like you've done a good job of kind of balancing all those because oh. I think a lot of women feel like I'm a mom and I'm a wife I don't know if I could also be a strong political figure you know and that's where it really comes down my faith is very important to me and so that's where I have to trust God to you know he helps Helps me balance everything yeah. out and I forgot to mention I'm soon to be a first-time grandmother uh, in July so <laughs> I'm gonna have to balance my little Lily that's coming yeah. and so you know you walk by faith yeah you, you take a step of faith you know yeah. we can't orchestrate everything in our life yeah. and so you just kind of yeah, go exactly. with the flow now you know it sounds really good because it sounds like your husband always has supported you always what do you think you would have done if he said I don't want you to do it like you kill know, your dreams you know unfortunately the time of person that I am you know I love my husband and you know <laughs> we were raised you know being submissive but that whole submissive that's another show right, right, right. but probably I probably wouldn't be engaged in yeah. it where I am now but right. I have thank God had a person yeah a husband that has just yeah. said go for it yeah and I from think day one from day one from day which one. I think is huge because I think a lot of you know women probably want to get involved in different areas yeah. but if they don't have the support of their husbands or their children it can yeah. definitely become a big area yeah. you know of a conflict, conflict. Yeah. so when you so when you coach other women who have these major dreams but everything they do their husband shut them shout you know shot you know shot them down shut them down you're not doing that what do you tell them you know it's really a thin line because you know I'm not into destroying homes but I am into making sure that you pursue your goals right. because you'll end up frustrated yeah. you know you'll end up um, really uh, not fulfilling what you've been called to do right so there's a balance so yeah. there's a way that you can do it yeah. with not upsetting the whole ship. Right. So I still encourage women to to work on your dreams. Take right. care of what you need to, but right. still don't let them die. Right. Because don't let you them die. die if you, you die with it. Exactly. You yeah, you die with it. And then a lot yeah. of times your whole family can end up being a benefactor of the blessing that's on your life. That's you know right. what I mean? Because you right. may have children or nieces or nephews who that's now right. want to come into the political realm. Well, guess what? Mom has already opened that door. That's right. That's right. That's <laughs> so right. all they got to do is walk through walk it, through you it. know. So I think that's good. And I think that's good advice because I think that, you know, as, you know, 
the same thing, seeing a lot of women who want to go for it, but I think you can you can get the best of both worlds. Right. That's you right. You can get the best of both worlds. So talk a little bit about, because I'm strong on developing a team. How much has having a strong support team been in you being able to get where you are now? It's everything, and you were mentioning the points about your PowerPoints. Yeah. It is important to have a team. You know, nobody's an island. Yeah. You can't do it by yourself. Right. You have to have people that believe in you yeah. and that are willing to see you fulfill their, your dream and right. their dreams will come along with you. Right. And having different people on the team also gives you a different opinion, a different mindset, yeah. a different view. view but the bottom that. line, it's yeah. you and your yeah. dream. <laughs> but having those extra minds at the table to is do very it is really important. Yeah. Well, good. This is so good. Thank you, girl. All right, so listen, we're going to play a game now called What Would You Do? Okay. okay? And here's the question. Marcus A. is a 48-year-old police officer born and raised in Chicago. He loves his city, is passionate about decreasing the crime rate, okay? He's fed up and determined to make a change on a bigger platform. He wants to run for political office to have a greater voice in making decisions about the city. He knows quite a few people having grown up in Chicago, but no one of significant influence. He has little to no support. If you were Marcus, what action steps would you take to start making strides towards fulfilling your dreams? Oh, that's a very good question. And you know what he needs to do? First of all, he needs to get connected in his community. He needs to get outside of his box if he hasn't already in his realm of influence mm -hmm. and join local business chamber of commerce, mm. join other networking groups, join the, um, I'm thinking of the NAACP, if he's African American, but join other groups that mm -hmm. you can network with people mm -hmm. and meet other people to increase his fear of influence, gotcha. and then see what he can do at a city level, because mm -hmm. there are many volunteer positions that you can start at, Got and you. just to get your feet wet to get okay. involved. But I would definitely say do it, because yeah. if the dream is there, then yeah. everything yeah. else will come. So joining those organizations, city council, all those things all those. can really, really help him yes. to yes. propel into hopefully becoming mayor of That's his city right. at some point. That's well, right. Well, Sylvia, I want you to know I love you, girl. I love you, too. Jewel. All right, congratulations. I already declare husband. that you've already won as mayor. It's already totally and completely done. Thank you. And so know that you just have our full, full, full support, okay? So now I do want to ask you uh, very, very quickly, you know, we've been talking a lot about the political realm. We've been talking about balancing it between being a mom and being a wife and then also, you know, being in business and being an entrepreneur. I want you to talk a little bit about these conferences that you really just kind of, you brought me into and girl, that thing was off the chain. Okay, <laughs> let me tell you something, that thing was right. We had so much fun. We were able to make yeah. such an impact on so many women. So talk a little bit about what you're doing in your conferences and why a woman, or I don't know if they're open for men or not. Is this really, your conferences are really just for women? Just for women, They're yeah. really just customized for women. So talk about why would a woman want to come to you know, your conference. Well, you know, again, it goes back to my whole premise of being a believepreneur. Yeah. And the conference that we did this year, and you'll be a part of it next year, the ultimate women's event. Because yeah. I believe that every woman has something on the inside of them yeah. that needs to be stirred up, needs to be motivated. Yeah. And ultimately, I believe into a business, yeah. into a book, into yeah. a product, mm. into some tangible means that will be bring resources to their home mm -hmm. or to her home. And so we've assembled people that can help you get the job done. We've yeah. assembled women that have been very, very successful. Um, and so that's going to happen again. And so yeah. I want to see women yeah. because I've done so much with my life. Yeah. And God just didn't say it's only for you. Right, His right. promises are yeah. for everybody. Yeah, and exactly. So, you know, I'm just the type of person I want to bring everybody <laughs> along. You know, I want everybody to come along yeah. with me on this journey yeah. and just experience life. Exactly. You know, there's a scripture that says he came to give us life right. and life more abundantly. Absolutely. So we want to share tools yeah. with other women yeah. to give them strategies and direction and a blueprint right. so that they can have a successful Absolutely. life as well. Absolutely. Because I think, you know, and it goes back to that whole team thing, I think that if you're going to become successful, you're going to have to have not just a team, but a strong support team That's right. that believes in you, yes. that helps you kind of flesh out the ideas. Yes. You know, everything that we're doing right now, everything that you're doing right now, we would not be where we were without having a strong
strong support team to help you think, to help you complete projects, to help you start projects, to help you get creative, innovative, to help you change. You know what I mean? I mean, they just help in so many different areas. So I think your conference is so vital. Conferences like that are so vital because I think as women, we could easily get lost in just being moms and being wives. And though that's beautiful, we have to have a place where we can come and say, you know, do it, girl. You can do it, girl. You can do it. <laughs> you know, where somebody really, really, right. really believes right. in you. So That's right. I love the fact that you're doing that. And I thank God, you know, that you do. We both are blessed because we both have husbands that are like, girl, get it. You yeah. know what I'm That's saying? Right. That's and right. that's huge. And hopefully even there, maybe women, you know, can tell, go home and tell their husbands and say, honey, listen, they're still great moms. They're still great wives because I know it's very important for me as it is for you, mm-hmm. you know, that they, that our children and our families still feel love and feel so, feel, you know, feel still the uh, the support. The so, support. And you yeah. know, we're bringing up another generation. Yeah. And so that's why the, the gifts that we have, it's not only for us, but we've got another generation that we need to that pull we gotta, up. That we gotta pull up there. So I want to thank you so much for coming thank on the you. show today. Yes, girl, you've been a show. blessing. Thank you. thank you. Thank you so thank much, you so much. I love you. Listen, you need to make sure you vote for her. I don't care if you don't live in Southfield, Michigan or not. Vote for her. And we'll be right back after this break. One day when the glory comes, it will be ours. Dr. King, what's your next move? In March from Summer to Montgomery. Selma is loud for every man, woman, and child. We will not wait any longer. In front of a crowd. Ready. Ready to face a nation's problems. Ready to conquer. Ready to fix. Ready to heal. Ready to educate. Ready to change. Ready to fight. Ready to work. Ready to illuminate. Ready to impact this world. The Impact Network. Now it's time for Reality Watch. Ooh, it's a hot one today. On the reality show, Preachers of Detroit, we have two women in ministry who have opposing views on women in leadership. Tell your neighbor, it's Bishop Coletta Vaughn, who believes that women can hold any office that she desires. And we have Evangelist Dorinda Clark Cole, who believe that women have their place, but not in the leadership roles such as bishops and so forth. Now, my opinion uh, on who I believe is right or wrong (laughs) is not important, but I will say that as women, uh, we should be our husband's girlfriends when we get home. Come on, can I get an amen? Now, let me say this. Okay, let me quit. I'm playing, y'all. But listen, um, I, I'm not going to go into that. Ben and I both actually love both of them. And so if you want my opinion, you're going to have to email me. <laughs> but anyway, let me tell you what I will say. That when you get your tail home, ladies, you do not need to be nobody's pastors, bishop, archbishop, evangelist, missionary. You need to be straight, girlfriend, what's up, boo? Don't no husband want you preaching to him about what he not doing right and what the word said and all of that stuff. You need to get in there and handle your business. That means you need to be cooking, you need to be cleaning, and I'm on her head. You figured out. Uh. <laughs> but you need to be your woman. You need to be your husband's girlfriend for real I mean all of that at the end of the day I think that we got to be careful as women in ministry and in leadership that we don't get so caught up in the call of ministry that we forget the first we call to be our husband's girlfriend's mistress sweet thing all them things now remember you can have it all and until next time I'll see you right back here on the Jill Tankard Show